You heard about President Trump and Joe Biden ramping up their hits on each other. Senator Bernie Sanders, meanwhile, today makes a case for socialism in what's considered a major policy speech. He's got some proposals expected to include Medicare for all, free public college, $15 per hour minimum wage. Oregon Republican Greg Walden, the House Energy and Commerce Committee ranking member. Sir, how you doing? And good morning and welcome back to our program here. What do good you think? Good to be with you. Good morning. How's, it, how's this going to go over and what's the price tag? You know, when, when government takes things over, it seldom gets less expensive or more efficient. And there's going to be an enormous bill for taxpayers. There's no such thing as a free lunch as we know. And what concerns me most is about people's access to health care, because we know in countries where there is a complete government takeover, they end up in a budget crunch, and you wait in the hospital line. You wait to get diagnosed for cancer. You wait to get treatment. There are reports. You've covered it. The New York Times has covered it. Everybody covers it. Why would we want to go down that system and abolish the health insurance that 158 million people, including union workers who negotiated for good plans, have? Why would we abolish all that well, he and then have the government run it like the yes. DMV? Apparently, sir, on the Democratic side, he's not the only one who supports that, as you know. Well, the irony is they say that, they campaign on that, and yet I'm the top Republican on the Energy and Commerce Committee, the Committee of Jurisdiction, and it's been months since I asked for a hearing on Medicare for All. If we're going to go down this path, if Nancy Pelosi and Bernie Sanders and the like and AOC are going to take us down this path of complete socialism, then shouldn't we have a hearing in the Committee of Jurisdiction, the Energy and Commerce Committee, and yet we've not had one. I don't think they're as serious about this from a policy standpoint as they are from a political standpoint. And I hope that's the case, because if they abolish health insurance, if they abolish Medicap policies, if they abolish medical, Medicare Advantage policies and rip away the health insurance 158 million Americans have and replace it with a government-run system, do you think that's going to get less affordable and you're going to have health care more available? Well, here's what, so. here's what part of Senator Sanders is going to say on screen. He's going to say, we must take the next step forward and guarantee every man, woman, and child in our country basic economic rights, the right to quality health care, the right to a secure retirement, and the right to live in a clean environment. So this is going to be a campaign issue. It's quite clear on that. But you don't think they're serious? Well, we'll see. I think they're serious when they're out campaigning. But if they were serious here in Congress, they'd actually have a hearing in the Committee of Jurisdiction, and that's the Energy and Commerce Committee. But moreover, why aren't they doing more about the actual costs of health care? That's what's driving me and my colleagues on the Republican side and Americans crazy. You know, after Obamacare got in place, nobody's premiums went down, but your co-pays and what you pay out of pocket went up. This president, President Trump, has led the effort to try and bring drug and prescription prices down. We've never had a chief executive lean in more. And his team have done amazing work to try and force down the cost of prescription drugs. And they're on our side trying to drive down the cost of care, the actual bill you end up paying. That's what we should be focused on and rein in these out of control costs that nobody can explain how, why things cost the way they do. And so we need to do more in that effort, not turn it over to government run system. I, okay, I'm let, afraid will only be more expensive. Let me squeeze access. in two more points here. I understand the point you're making there. You want to bring this up for a vote. I don't know if that's going to happen with Speaker Pelosi. Do, do you? Well, you know, it's interesting. She had a hearing in the Rules Committee. They had a hearing in the Ways and Means Committee. They're not having a hearing in the Committee of Jurisdiction. I don't know. It's, it's where they're headed with this thing. But I do know if they go down this path, um, then, then I think we, we just risk access to care on a timely basis. Well, what you what see do you think the vote would... Right. You saw the vote yesterday in contempt with Bill Barr. It's right along party lines. Yeah. Well, what do you honestly think the vote would be if this came oh, to I the think, floor? Oh, I think it would pass. I think all the Democrats would vote for it. Um, and I, I don't think you'd see Republicans particularly going down that path, because we know what, what health care costs. We know what it would do to access and all that. I, if, you know, they control the levers of power in the House. They could bring it up to a vote any day they wanted. They could have a hearing any day they so wanted. So why won't they? And yet they haven't done it. Well, that's a good question. I don't think they can figure out how to pay $32 trillion, which is what both liberal and conservative think tanks say it will cost American taxpayers. And I think when you expose it for what it is, then they lose their political time. Talking point. Right. Last point here. You're having a hearing today on surprise medical billing. What do you hope to get done with that, sir? Look, when patients, when, when patients follow the rules by their insurance companies, they go in to get health care, they shouldn't get stuck with an unexpected bill because let's say somebody got sick that, that was in the approved list and you got substituted somebody else. 
president has weighed in dramatically on this. I'm glad we're actually working on this issue. Uh, you shouldn't get stuck with an unexpected bill of tens of thousands of dollars if you played by the rules as the patient. So we're into putting customer first, consumers first, and so I think we'll make progress, and I'm glad President Trump is weighing in on this as he yeah. has, and is very strongly supportive of what to we're disagree. Doing. Hard to disagree with that, right, if you're, as long as you're playing by the rules. That's so, right. Th <laughs> thank you for your time. Greg Wall, the Republican from Oregon. We'll see how far you get. Thank you. Thank